guitarlings, this is Gray over at Hub Guitar. We're here today to study Boire in E minor. This is a very, very well-known uh, Bach piece originally for lute. And uh, of course, lutes being far and few these days, nowadays you'll hear it a lot on the guitar. You'll often hear it on the nylon string or so-called classical guitar, uh, but it can be played by any six string guitar at all, including electric guitar, steel string acoustic, which is what I'm playing. Uh, so if you don't have a nylon string guitar, don't let that stop you from getting into a little bit of classical guitar. This piece has two different sections. The opening section, which is a little bit more shorter, is also sort of thematic. And when you think of Boire in E minor, this is probably what is kind of floating around in your head. And then there's a, a longer B section. Um, I think that it's important to spend more time studying the latter half. I found that most students who do learn this piece can usually play the A section fairly well, but they tend to stumble on the B section. And I think that's mostly because it gets a little bit under practiced. So let's begin. On the pickup measure, we're gonna start with our second finger, that's our middle finger on the third fret of the big string. Play that with the open E string. And then we're gonna immediately go to a full bar all the way across the string so we can play two and two of the high and low E strings. So that's the pickup measure. Measure one, three and open, two and open fifth string. Now we have a sort of miniature chord here between two and four. Use your middle finger again for this third fret note and do the bar again if you can for these two in measure two. And make sure you use different fingers here. One, three, four. One, three, four. Fourth finger. Now I like to slide down my pinky to the third fret of the second string, but I usually will play the second fret note here in the end of measure two with my second finger. That way I can quickly reach that first fret note with my index finger. Now we're on the third measure and this little this last measure gets a lot of people tripped up so let's talk about that start with your middle finger index finger index finger and open pinky finger index now here what I do is I reach over with my middle finger and go back up to the third fret with my second finger and come back down for that bar so I have this now we're on measure five similar. So there's a little bit of a slur on this note here. So you're going to play 5th fret of the 5th string and 4th fret of the 4th string. And uh, slurs can be kind of, you know, they can be little trills. They can just be 1, 2, they can be slow, they can be fast. So when you're deciding how to play this, you might think about the style. You might listen to other players who are uh, following this Baroque style. Um, I don't really put a lot of thought into it actually, I just kind of do whatever feels right. And we've got a little chord there. Uh, with the right hand, there's not a whole lot to talk about except that you don't want to have just one finger doing all of the plucking work. And especially where you see repeated notes on a single string, so consecutive notes up a single string as we see in measure two. We want to try to get into the habit of using this walking motion with our picking hand so that we're kind of alternating between two fingers. Typically in this kind of counterpoint style we're going to use our index and middle finger because our thumb is playing the bass and our index and middle finger can play um, in alternation the melody notes. That might change up a little bit if we're doing something that has more strings and more chords but most of what you see here is just counterpoint which is typically two notes at one time. I think it's very productive to practice this at an extremely slow pace where you, ha you tap your foot or you turn on a metronome and you actually set your point of reference to the eighth note because there is nothing else in this entire piece except eighth notes and quarter notes. So that will help you to keep it at a nice steady pace. So I've got a metronome set to 60 beats per minute and I'm going to actually use those as eighth notes. Two. 
I think if you practice that way, you'll be able to discipline yourself to practice it at a slow pace and you'll have a better familiarity with the time. A lot of students who tackle this tune because it's supposed to be cool and fast tend to practice it too fast, but that can be counterproductive because uh, at a certain point, you're just practicing your mistakes when you play it too fast. So go nice and slow. Let's talk about the B section. We're gonna start with our middle finger on the third fret of the big string and play those couple pickup notes there. Now I like to do index in four, two, index, third finger, um, index and pinky, and then third finger. Notice that I combine the last beat of this measure into almost a full chord. That means that every note has a finger chosen for it already. I'm not trying to do something like this. I'm just sort of approaching it as if it were a chord. Next measure. And last measure of this line. Might want to use some hammer on and pull off action there just to help you to play those notes a little bit more fluidly. But you can pluck them all. 14. There's that chord again. This is measure 15 now. Index finger and pinky. This 1 and 2 shape is actually pretty much the same thing as the 5 and 4 shape, so try to keep your hand kind of making the same shapes. You know, don't don't get your hand all bent out of shape as you make that switch because when you go from the five and four, that shape is coming again and again here in the first beat of the next measure. Now you may see a trill written on this note on some, uh, some of the notation or tabs that you come across, but I left it out. Let's talk about this run on measure 17. We're going to start with our middle finger, play that with the open string. We might do a little ham pull off hammer on kind of thing, just to make things more fluid. And then we switch to a full bar at the last beat of that measure. So two, one, two, 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 those are the fingers. So middle finger, index, middle, 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 and then bar keep that bar for the first beat of the next measure. Now you may be tempted, when you slide down to five and seven, to continue to have that bar there, but actually you need to clear off of the E string. So I like to just keep that bar and then sort of adjust my fingering as I slide down to more of a two finger thing instead of a full bar. That way I can reach the open E. Measures 19 and 20 can get a little bit awkward, so practice them slowly. Notice that I chose different fingerings for those notes, even though they didn't end up becoming a full chord. I'm using my second and third finger for these two notes, and then on the third beat, first and fourth finger. And then again, I'm switching to second and third. Dividing the labor that way between my fingers helps me to be a little bit more nimble. Now, any time you see an open string in any tab, you can actually potentially change it to a fretted note, if that's easier for you. In, in some cases, if you were to visualize that change here, you would find it easier. Uh, there is sort of a trade-off. Playing the open string is easier because you don't have to push anything, but it's harder because you've got to clear away from the fretboard so that you also don't disturb that open string that you're playing. So you wanna think about that. I think the best way to learn this is actually to compare different tabs and different fingerings and come up with the one that's best for you at your current skill level. Let's talk about the ending here. So I did write a ritardando, which is kind of convenient because it gets a little bit messy after this point. It's sort of very tricky fingerings, but it's also a kind of appropriate time to slow down the thing because we're reaching the end of the piece. That's very, very common. It's so common, in fact, it's sometimes considered implicit. As you get to the end of the piece, you're just going to slow it down in general. And that would definitely start to take place by the uh, 23rd or 24th measure, but I did think it might sound more musical to start at the 21st measure because that's where all of these difficult fingerings are gonna begin. So we're gonna start with our index and fourth finger. Open up, do this little run here. Make sure you use your third finger and open on the last beat of measure 21 and first and second. Now, it's very, uh, hopefully, you can see when you look at this one and two, 
that you've got this, that shape already, so you just move that up two frets. And if you're using fingers one and two, which index and middle, to three and four, then you should have a finger free, like your pinky, to get the fifth fret of the third string. Now we're gonna go to the third finger on the third fret of the big string, and reach our index finger down, and get back to that one and two, sort of A minor type of shape. For measure 23, you're gonna want a bar probably, so you can get two and two, and fourth fret of the fifth string. There's not really an easy way to do that, but you do get to recycle that bar by moving up two frets, and this time you play strings five and three, and followed by four. So we've got this. And then we'll open string six and three, and then it gets a little bit easier after that. So you could repeat the section B, or you could just play section A twice and section B once. Uh, either way would be fine, but make sure that you don't neglect your practice of section B, because that's where that's really going to show up. In fact, when we did this video, I had to postpone it by a week because I didn't practice section B enough. So it's something you want to put a little bit of time into. So that's it for Boire in E minor. Great tune, not the easiest piece, but if you can get this tune under your belt, it'll be an achievement worth being proud of. Thanks for watching.